Good morning. Welcome all who may be attending or those who may be watching. We are pleased to have you join us in our Eucharistic celebration this morning. As we prepare ourselves, let's turn our attention to the altar, where the holy sacrifice of the Mass will be celebrated by Father Monticello on this 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Good morning. Please join in our opening hymn, All Are Welcome. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, Rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in thee. Before we begin Mass, please join me in welcoming Bill Mahar. He had just turned 100 years old on August 14th, and he is here with us today. Thank you, Bill. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A response to oil psalm, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing songs to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, Harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts at the Merbah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me, they tested me though they had not seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Our second reading is a reading from a letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever, whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, Love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. God has reconciled himself in Christ and entrusted to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
in today's society, we hear many definitions of what love is. But in the 13th century, St. Thomas Aquinas defined love as willing the good of the other. Willing the good of the other. And perhaps the reason why we have so many definitions of love today is because we don't know what the good is anymore. Today, the good is totally subjective and relativistic. The good is whatever you want it to be, whatever feels good, whatever makes you happy. But you see the difference? Christian love involves neighbor and self. Jesus said, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But the world's notion of love diminishes or even excludes the equality of neighbor. It places self above neighbor and therefore above the good of others. But secular society will deny this. They will say they are open to everyone and that everyone is included and everyone has a right to do whatever they want. Tolerance is in the vocabulary of society's notion of love. But my friends, tolerance is not a Christian concept. It never was. Christian love looks very different from society's portrayal of it. First, we believe in objective moral truths, right and wrong. We believe there are certain moral acts that are good for us and that are bad for us. We believe that our actions shape us and form us, either for better or for worse. We believe that there are certain acts that fulfill us and make us happy and acts that deform us and lead us to misery and pain. There is a moral law. And it's kind of like the law of gravity, if you will. And what if a man wanted to try and break that law by jumping off the roof of his house in order to try and fly. What do you suppose would happen to him? Would he really break that law? Or would the law break him? And when we sin, we inflict ourselves with punishment. Sin is its own punishment. It breaks us. Sin destroys us and deforms our souls. Not only does sin inflict temporal punishment, but it can also lead to eternal punishment as well. That's why we strive to live by the commandments and the teachings of Christ. We are guided and formed by God's law to do good for others and for our neighbor. And by doing good for our neighbor, we are actually doing good for ourselves as well. And by giving us the commandments, God shows us how to live together in peace with one another. Everyone wants peace, but no one wants to live by the commandments anymore. Why? It's because of selfish desire placing myself over the other. We no longer think about our neighbor, except when we only want to feel good about ourselves. But even that neglects neighbor for the self-ulterior motive of self-satisfaction. Christian love is so much more. It is not loving to satisfy oneself. 
It's rather loving others for the sake of Christ, to satisfy and to please Christ. It is willing the good of the other, wanting what's best for your neighbor, which is ultimately eternal life with Christ. It is not to force or coerce anyone to Christ. We don't believe in that. But it's to love others with the motivation and desire to win them over for Christ, that they may freely choose Christ. It looks different from your ordinary do-gooders. Love is not true love if we are not loving for the sake of Christ to bring people to Christ. And charity is not true charity if it's not done in the name of Christ. Look at St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta and all the good work she did. She did this work because she heard Christ in a poor beggar calling out to her just in the same words he uttered from the cross, I thirst. Her work was to quench Christ's thirst for souls. She took care of the poorest of the poor, yes, because there was a human need. But ultimately, her work was for the salvation of souls, for the sake of Christ. And my friends, The bishop, he did not ordain me to make me feel good about myself. No. He ordained me for the mission of the church, which is the salvation of souls. So I'm not a priest to make everyone happy. I'm a priest to get people to heaven. So you see... There is no room for tolerance in the church because God doesn't tolerate our poor choices and bad behavior. It's because God doesn't tolerate our pain and our misery of living in filth and in sin. What parent would tolerate their child sitting in a soiled diaper for so long? Right? You wouldn't do it because you love your children more than that. And so God loves us so much more than just tolerating us and letting us wander off down the path of sin and destruction. That's why he intervened and gave us the commandments and sent us his only begotten son to teach us the way we ought to live, to teach us the way of happiness, of fulfillment, of peace, to teach us the way to eternal life. Nowhere did Christ say, live however you want. That would defeat the purpose of his coming. He rather said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through me. Christ said, I am the gate. I am the gate to eternal life. So we are to love in a similar way to Christ, the Good Shepherd, who leaves his 99 sheep to go after the one that is lost. We love in order to bring people back into the fold of Christ. We love in order to bring people back to church. And my friends, that's how we glorify God. But we do not do God's lost sheep any favor by tolerating their bad behavior and way of life. We do not do our lost neighbor 
any good by simply agreeing with him to please him. And we are not doing our lost neighbor any good by making him feel good about his poor choices and bad actions, to make him feel they are somehow okay. We have to be honest and upfront if we really love our neighbor. And sometimes we even have to admonish and correct our neighbor who made a wrong choice, a choice that is detrimental to his soul. Sometimes, if we know them well enough, we have the obligation to speak up and say something. If we love our neighbor as ourselves, we would approach our neighbor with a gentle spirit, just as God does to us, and to share our sincere concern in order to bring them out of the darkness and into the light. But we must do it out of love, not self-righteousness. Sometimes we feel like we want to do God a favor by hitting our neighbor over the head with a divine two-by-four, right? But that's not our job. That's God's job. And we always have to remember that truth and charity go together. Truth is in charity, and charity is in the truth. Today, we have a society that preaches love, 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 but it's empty of truth. I mean, how can you preach love when you say killing an unborn baby is okay? And then the other extreme are those who preach truth, 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 with anger and hatred in their hearts. But my friends, do not be deceived by these two wolves in sheep's clothing. Saint Edith Stein once said, Do not accept anything as the truth if it lacks love. And do not accept anything as love which lacks truth. So today, May it be our resolution to put into practice this better understanding of Christian love. To love others for the sake of Christ, for the salvation of souls, all for the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, come substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For our Holy Father, our bishops and priests, who have been entrusted with a prophetic role, that they may speak out bravely against any evil that destroys and wounds Christ's followers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace for our brothers and sisters in the Middle East, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to racism and an increase in compassion for those who suffer from mental illness and addiction within our community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this Labor Day, the God will bless all who labor the work of their hands and minds, and for all who are unemployed or underemployed, that God will give them hope and courage and open new opportunities for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those enrolled in our book of prayers and for those who have asked for our prayers in a time of distress, that we may unite together lovingly to intercede for them, knowing that our un United prayer is irresistible to our Heavenly Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithfully departed ones, that they may soon be purified to sing joyfully to the Lord, coming into his divine presence with thanksgiving in the kingdom of heaven, especially Janet Beldu, Daniel Pride, and for John, Carrie, Sarah, and Charles Mandola, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let's pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. For all of these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We unite these and all our poor prayers to those of the Immaculate Blessed Virgin Mary and speak them in the name of her Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. There is one collection for this weekend, just the regular weekly collection. There are baskets available in the back, in the side of the church, and the table next to the Paschal candle. Please drop your envelope in one of those baskets. Online giving is available for those who prefer to give that way. The link is in the bulletin. And you are welcome to continue to mail your envelopes into the office. As always, we thank you for your continuous support through this difficult time.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that, through this offering, we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may faithfully be united in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope and Salvator our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless Acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, To you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace, and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon 
through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our announcements. Yesterday morning, we began the 8 a.m. Saturday morning Mass at our Mother of Sorrows Church. All are welcome to join every Saturday there as we celebrate our Lord in the Eucharist. Next weekend, September 12th and 13th, we'll have a special collection in addition to our regular two collections. This will be for the shrines in the Holy Land. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. As a reminder, if you wish to attend Mass and receive the Eucharist on the weekend, but feel you won't be able to social distance yourself properly, we have provided overflow seating in our parish center for our 5 p.m. and 10 a.m. weekend Masses. There is a TV in the room that runs our live streaming. If you have not already done so, please complete the contact training mass card located in the bulletin. If you attend Mass at Our Mother of Sorrows, please complete the contact tracing card as well and return it to the parish office at Mother of Sorrows. This is an extremely important to assist us if the need should arise. And tomorrow, on Labor Day, please come and join us at the 9 a.m. Mass here at Holy Cross or the 8 a.m. Mass at Our Mother of Sorrows. And there will be no 5.20 p.m. Mass on Labor Day. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our recessional hymn is Seek Ye First. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Alleluia. 